first of all, with the Lucille Ball thing, um, the first time I learned about Lucille Ball's involvement in Star Trek came via a script that somebody wrote on Gene Roddenberry's life. And they asked me to, you know, see if I can get it to the right places so that it can become a, a, a motion picture. And as I was reading the script, it was a very well-written script. I think it's an awesome story. And I actually think they should do a movie about Gene Roddenberry if his estate will allow. But ultimately in the script, it talks about Lucille Ball and him trying to pitch it to, you know, these various people and how many doors closed in his face. And I, I was reading the script. I'm like, how does nobody know this? Like, there's got to be more people that know about this. Um, so I thought that was the fascinating for me to kind of realize that, you know, in the age that we talk about of women empowerment and we talk about, you know, glass ceilings and, and, and things like that, that are, you know, we see that Lucille Ball really was like yeah. trendsetting and uh, did so much more than we already knew that she did. So I felt like that you mentioned giving her credit. I think that is a very important um, thing to do. I mean, you can ask friends of mine from high school, like I have been saying since maybe even junior high, if Gene is the father, Lucille is the mother. Like it's, yeah, by the way, and we didn't get to put this in. It'll be on the Blu-ray, by the way. Okay. Like she, like, she, like she invented multicam. Oh, yeah. I heard you saying that on another interview. I was like, mind blown. I didn't know that. It's 80 years later. They're doing it right now all around us in L.A. Like like they invented that. She had she invented what's called a put pilot, which is where a network must make a pilot. They must shoot it. She had she invented that concept. Hmm. She had two. One was Star Trek and the other was Mission Impossible. So, yeah, two real underachiever. (laughs) Oh, and by the way, she's Lucille Ball. Yeah. Yeah. Brilliant. I was actually thinking like when I heard you talking about that on the show and then in the after show in the multicam, I was like, oh, yeah, now that I think about it, like that is why the Honeymooners and other shows look so dated when you watch them. It's just like one one cam following everybody yeah. around it's Good so point. brilliant but to me but to me it's always like imagine if steve jobs was the star of the number one sitcom like for 12 years running and he invented apple like that's who she is like she mm-hmm. had a full-time job as an actress and she built these things that are literally still tom cruise he's gonna be ethan hunt till he dies like there's three, four Star Trek shows in production right now. Multicam is probably, there's probably 80 multicams in production right now. How long has she been dead? 30 years? Like, well, that's mind boggling. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I didn't know that. Wow. Now, that's changing uh, the game. Brian, to ask a little bit more about the center seat, because I'm, I'm really interested in this, just like all the other nerds of the world yeah. are. Um, if you, if you had an 11th episode of the center seat, what would you like that to focus on? Well, I don't know if you saw in the trailer F Murray Abraham, but that, that should be a pretty big clue that, uh, there are probably going to be more episodes, but let me pretend there isn't. And then let me (laughs) fairly answer your question. And that answer would be the next gen features. Oh, okay. I was hoping that. Yeah. Right. Especially because like on Amazon, when you pull it down, it says season one. And Ryan and I were last night, we're talking like when season two. (laughs) That's the, which is the, basically the other question. Is there going to be a season two or should we just assume probably, or maybe? It's, uh, it's, it's likely. It's likely. Wow. We are not venting drive plasma with this show that's for mark <laughs> altman if he's listening shout out to mark oh my gosh <laughs> wow all right well i'm happy Brian, Brian, I, I wanted to ask you about the the kind of switch that you made 
in your career? Because you you did say that you were doing comedy albums, and I did look up, and you pretty much work with every comedian there is uh, who's yeah. made any special. Um, what? Why the transition? Like, because this is completely outside of the realm of comedy, and now you're doing other things. What made you switch? <laughs> I mean, it's a great question, and, and I'm going to give you a truthful answer. Um, so, I mean, I fell into comedy as I'd been in a comedy club once in my life before I got out to Hollywood. Um, I was broke. I was out of money. I was interning for free. There's some dude who was assisting a manager. I didn't even know what a fucking manager did. So uh, he was paying 50 bucks a day cash. I was broke. I wasn't getting paid. I took the job. Three years later, I was a manager of comedians. And wow. believe, it, believe it or not, nobody wanted me to manage documentaries about stuff I was passionate about. So I had to, and I, we still do that. I mean, we've shot, I think we shot five this month. So, I mean, it's not like we're out of the stand-up business. We're in it more than ever. But right. we had to build that base so that we could start to do this. And then again, the game changer was Toys That Made Us. I mean, it yeah. took me seven years to sell it. It was the most random, lucky break that happened that it even sold, let alone to Netflix. Um, it's the second or third unscripted show ever greenlit by Netflix. So like, it was just being at the right place. And I was already in business with them because of the standup. So after Toys That Made Us came out, because I know you know this, Producers and directors, we get typecast just like actors. So that was why it took me so long to sell Toys That Made Us was because every time I tried to sell, people would be like, why is the stand-up guy talking about toys? <laughs> yeah. After Toys That Made Us came out, then when I would pitch stuff, it was like, oh, my God, it's the guy who did Toys That Made Us. And it just started getting easier and faster mm -hmm. And that's really, without Toys That Made Us, we wouldn't be here right now. Well, the three of you would be, someone else but me. 